Okay guys, I'm probably not even half on screen for most of what I'm talking about here, but uh, you can see bit next to me the uh, what we call the cool wall, and the uh, camera is not, this is going to be one of those days. But I've got next to me the cool wall, which is where we put pictures of pretty much all the cool things that have happened to us, uh, Jen and I, and I have three more to put up. One of them from the mountain climbing trip that we had last year, which, uh, if you remember the vlog, we did a, an entire video on that, and uh, a couple of other events. Uh, in fact, one of them is the mountain climbing, another one is the top of the mountain, and one is me with Jacob Lee's mug. And I want to put them up on this wall, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm very much of the opinion that we should celebrate and remember our achievements, and all the nice things that happen in life. So, that's what I'm doing here. Now, not everyone would think the same things are the nice things in life, but I really enjoyed my time when I met Jacob because we had a, a nice conversation and he did a very good speech and we had a very good meal as well because it was uh, a dinner event. So I'm going to put that on the wall. Now, not everyone would agree with him and his policies and to be honest with you, I don't agree with everything, but nice guy. So let's get that straight on the wall before I even start work today. It's one of those busy days where I'm going to be working mostly in my office because I work from home as a book publisher and uh, as a media publisher and then I'll be going down to the town hall for my work as a counsellor. Why do I want this on the wall? About there. Put a scratch on the wall where you want the uh, thing to go and then you have an idea of where it is. So, it's probably not going to work out too well. I'm not the best at DIY, but I'll see how I go. That went in quite well. These little hammers, mini hammers, are brilliant because you can get into small areas. So, let's hope this works. <laughs> ah, the moment you try to do something on camera, it didn't work. There we are. Just two more to go. <laughs> That's actually looking pretty good. I like that. Like now, as you can see, there are big gaps on the wall and it's all higgledy piggledy. There is absolutely no rhyme or reason to the way that these are displayed and that is entirely the point. The way I look at it is, everything's a jumble because that's the way life is. So it goes up and down the wall and I think in the end it looks really, really good and I really love the way it's come out. So that's the kind of style I love. It's one of the things I learned in art. You can put everything together in wonderful rigid lines and it'll look great, especially if you have uh, false perspectives and things like that, it'll look amazing. Or you can jumble things up the way they do in a lot of art galleries where they put in a picture wherever they can on the walls because space is a premium. I use that approach here because space is a premium on the wall. There's only so much wall after all. So I think in the end it comes together as a kind of art display piece of its own. It has a bit of character and that's what I like. Okay, let's get to work. As a New Year's resolution, I'm doing the uh, slim fast diet thing. So if you see me eating something that I shouldn't, do leave a comment because I am trying to lose about four stone. Over the last few years due to basically a lifestyle change because I have a job where I sit down a lot now as well as walk around but you get used to that pretty quick. I've also had uh, a lot of medicines that I had to take for a while because of a quite a bad illness. If you remember from previous episodes I did talk about pulmonary embolism and a few other issues like that so it all adds up and now I need to go on this diet. It actually tastes quite good so let's hope that this works. Apparently I should be all right if I Take about six weeks, apparently, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, So, today's work, like I said, is going to be mainly in this office because I have a lot of stuff to do. I'm a book publisher and a general publisher, media, videos, uh, things like that. But I also have a lot of uh, stuff to write up from my council work, so I've got a kind of mixed bag today. I better get on with this because it won't write itself, more is the pity. It's a bit like uh, what I was doing yesterday in the first uh, of this new series where I was writing a load of uh, reports. Got to finish them off, got to get a few other reports written. It's a long haul because we've got a load of planning stuff to fight. It's always planning, we've got to fight planning because we're basically being overdeveloped in West Horton and I don't like that, so I'd better get on with it. Let's do it. But of course, working at home is not the only place that I work because I also have my work as a counsellor. I've come down to town hall today to uh, basically catch up on work that has turned up over the Christmas and New Year period because a lot I've been watching for my emails and uh, doing a lot of work via my phone. 
There is, of course, always the possibility that I've missed something. You only get a certain amount of uh, space on the phone, so you can only see a certain amount of emails. I've checked and double-checked, but, you know, you never know. So, as well as getting on with what work I have uh, set out for myself today, I've also got to make sure that I haven't missed anything over the festive period. I know I haven't, but you've got to make sure. So, let's get on with work. Right, I think I'm about done now, so... Yep, got documentation. Yep, done all my emails, got my documentation that I need. So, time to go home, because I can write up uh, a few of the last few pieces that I need to do at home, where basically I'm not taking up space in case anyone else needs these machines, because we all share the computers. There's only three of them in any year, 19 councillors. I'm usually able to get a machine and normally sit here and do a lot of work but I'm wary that with the uh, break just having finished for the Christmas and New Year period one might be coming in to catch up on work so best not hog the machine if I don't have to. I can write the rest at home so let's go. But hey, oh, you can't just stay at work all day so we are back home now and I am exhausted. I carried an entire box of cat food home with me because I live miles and miles from the town but uh, I do like to walk out back and back because it's my only uh, real exercise aside from delivering leaflets and things. So oh my goodness, tired but it's going to be worth it. I am actually feeling already, I've been on this uh, diet what, four, maybe even five days, no probably four days and I already feel like I've got more energy, I feel more able to do things so this is good. I damaged my shoulder though just before Christmas accidentally you know, walked into the door frame in the kitchen. Oh, you know those days where you're just not quite paying attention, one lapse of concentration and bam! And my goodness, it's really hot today. The weather is changing again and it's affecting that. But oh well, we'll just have to get on, rest, up, rest it up as much as I can and then just keep going. But there was one thing I wanted to talk about though, because when I was up in Durham, Jen and I went for a walk on Christmas Eve and I did the usual thing with her of showing us some of the old haunts including where I used to hang out and uh, go to the wreck where we used to go for bike rides and uh, places around there so I'd like to finish off today's video with that so with that in mind let's have a look well guys I'm out uh, in my old stopping grounds where I grew up and uh, we're just up for visiting my parents for Christmas seeing family you know that's everything you do it's very nice it's uh, Nice to have a walk out and just see how much it's changed because uh, as I showed you earlier on, those new houses, that was a field all the time I was growing up and they were wanting to put all sorts in there for decades. The planning uh, fight went on for about 20 years. They started off wanting to make an open cast coal mine and then they were thinking of golf course and then they eventually put houses on it. It's one of those things. So what actually got me interested in planning law to be honest with you was uh, the constant fight my dad was part of that. And, uh, we always fought it and it was very angry. But uh, it's, it's an emotional subject, of course it is, because like, basically they said, right, can we just get rid of the entire view of your house and have houses blocking it and that? I understand, I mean, views aren't a flying concern, but I understand. It's, I understand because of personal experience, basically. But we're out, uh, we're just about to, well, there is Coxo, and uh, behind us up there is Park Hill, a very small. Uh, small village because uh, it's the countryside I grew up in the country it's just nice to get out and about you know see the place it has changed a lot but uh, Jen and I are basically going for a walk trying to uh, get a bit of exercise uh, it's Christmas Eve and we want to we want a bit of exercise before tomorrow because we won't get any but we'll have a lot of food <laughs> us sitting around so you know that's how it is are we saying it's a solid metal casting, you know. There's a lot of metal there. Yeah. It's the old pick winding wheel at the top of the head frame. Uh, um, well, is it Bowman? No, this will be from the Coxer. Because it's like loads of quarries, uh, not quarries, mines around here, coal mines. Yeah, Jen, Jen's uh, just getting a quick schooling. There, there were lots of uh, mines here, not quarries. There are quarries. Yeah, in fact, uh, I used to camp out at a quarry a lot when it was disused, but now it's reopened, so you can't. But uh, that's uh, Cox of Mine, and uh, there's a few others down in Bourbon. Close in the 60s, if I remember correctly. Uh, my granddad worked in the 
one, then so did some of my uncles, and then when it closed, he became a bus driver. So that was quite an interesting life he had. The railway through here, I've got a date for when it was actually taken up, and it was as late as 1985, um, which was the point at which the quarry stopped sending stuff out by rail. Although, what it said is that that's when the track, when it was officially taken out of use, but it was believed that nothing had been sent out by rail for a couple of years. And uh, talking of that railway line, I remember it being there when I was uh, in my early teens because uh, we used to fall with every now and again. This is where I used to remember all the train line stuff. It was just laid, it was the end of uh, the line with a barrier and all sorts, but it all seems to have gone now. But uh, even into the mid 90s, it was still here. So when it actually disappeared, I can't tell you. But you can follow this all the way up there and it would go over to Cornford. We used to do that sometimes because that's where my uncles lived. And it was a good way to get there. And if we follow this track up, it goes round to the recreation park outside Coxo Sports Centre. Another place that we used to go a lot during the summer holidays because you could climb in the trees and we had a base there. But I even drew a map that showed us where everything was. We had a great time. We're on our way back from our walk now and uh, I decided that it has been a long time since I told Jan about uh, the other places we used to hang out as kids. So we're going to take a different route back home. Well, not home, back to my parents' house. It used to be home. Kind of still is, you know, you never really it's leave. Always home. Yeah, you never really leave. So, we're going to have a look down there and see how the old place where we used to ride our bikes all the time has changed and whether it has changed or not. This is a bridge of some kind. There you are. The little brook. There's the brook. I told you there was a bridge. The brook just here. So, that's the little brook. And uh, during the summer, of course, it's got more water in it than it has now. But that's how it is. So we're going to go down this road here. Yeah, it's uh, not too bad. I'll show you. Carpets are going to love you for this. <laughs> but we're going to walk down here. But uh, most of the time, you can just walk around the edges because most of it is actually fairly solid, or at least it was almost uh, 25 years ago. My goodness, I'm getting old. This was uh, far more trodden when I was out back uh, in the day. My goodness, late 80s, early to mid 90s, it was uh, a very different time, but we used to ride our bikes around here all the time. Usually on the route to and from the sports centre where we had a den, but also because we just rode around. This route will take us down to where my best friend when I was a kid used to live. So we're going down here and it'll come out onto a proper road, and then we'll go down to the park. Now we used to call it the wreck and it used to be an awful lot bigger than you'll see it now because uh, houses got built on part of it, which is unfortunate. We used to have a den down there as well. So here is the uh, little area where we used to have a den. If the trees are still there, I'll be amazed. Just here where this uh, yellow truck is, that used to be a set of trees. And I'm amazed that they're all gone because... <laughs> the I'm just remembering it. No, nope. the trees used to grow here and the reason I remember them very specially is because I was climbing one when a guy attacked me with a crowbar and broke my finger. Oh, you would remember something. So I do remember it, and it used to be here. I'm very surprised that it's all gone. Wow. These trees here were tiny saplings when I was a kid, and there used to be an awful lot more of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, the local kids used to uh, play around us and take and things around them, and some of them got damaged. In fact, most of them got damaged, I'll admit. So that's why there's only a few of them left. Yeah, and then the park is still there, although it seems to have changed a lot because the swings I remember and the roundabout and the slide are all now gone. Well, I suspect. That's a climbing uh, rock. My goodness, everything's changed. Yeah, we, uh, the equipment wears out. So it does, but I, I'd have thought it would be replaced like for like, but it hasn't. It's, it's all developed. <laughs> we were kids, we used to just get a few swings and a roundabout if you were lucky. That's all we used to get as kids. Yeah. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Shall we head home now? Yeah. It's always nice to come out and have a look at these things though. It's very, very different. But this used to all be open. Yeah. And incidentally, the road might be able to hear the background. It's the motorway, the A1N. Yes, the motorway's always been there though. We always used to be able to see it. And actually, in that tree line down there is another brook. There's one down there as well in this uh, small gorse. So you can't really see it here, but it gets further and further out over there and develops. I fell in there and soaked so many pairs of shoes. <laughs>
<laughs> that's that's part and parcel of growing up in the countryside. Right, let's head home. And there you are. I think it's a, a nice uh, thing to revisit your roots. And uh, that's really all I've got for you today. So tune in tomorrow. See you later. <laughs>